In this video, I'll go over my initial experience with the Exact 90 miter gauge from Woodpeckers. First, I'll briefly discuss the assembly and a couple of issues I had, then I'll talk about the process I used for calibrating the miter gauge, and last, I'll show the simple hanger that I made storing the miter gauge on the wall. There really is not a lot of assembly involved with the Exact 90 miter gauge. The miter bar, fence bracket assembly, and handle are already assembled when you take it out of the box. The first step is to install the fence onto the fence bracket assembly. There are three ratchet knobs that come with the, the miter gauge. You use the two longer ones and a couple of weld nuts to attach the fence to the fence bracket assembly. Then get it over reasonably close, say within a half an inch of the blade and lock it in place. We'll calibrate the scale on top of the fence later. So the second step in the instructions is to install the sacrificial fence. And that it actually in the instruction says that this is optional. Obviously, you don't need the sacrificial fence in order to use the miter gauge. But I would actually say, and, and we'll see it as we move along, that you do not want to install the sacrificial fence at this point. It'll only be a hindrance to much of the setup and calibration, and we'll see that as we move along. It became clear to me, and I ended up removing it uh, a bit later that there just really is no point in having it installed at this point. The next step in the procedure is to square the fence to your table saw blade. It doesn't say this in the documentation, but you have to loosen the handle in order to be able to adjust the fence. There is a calibration cam in the bracket assembly base just behind the handle, which is adjusted with a, a hex key provided that makes uh, the real detailed adjustments of the fence, very easy and convenient. So I would adjust the fence, then lock the, the handle back in place, and then recheck. And once I felt uh, reasonably assured that I had the, the fence square to the table saw blade, I was ready to move on to the next step in the procedure. The next step was to calibrate the scale on the fence. And here I quickly encountered a problem. The fence stop assembly was assembled incorrectly. The flip stop itself was installed, uh, rotated 180 degrees from how it should have been, which prevented the flip stop from being able to go all the way to the blade. Uh, I realized after thinking about it for a minute that if I disassembled the flip stop assembly, I could rotate the flip stop 180 degrees, reinstall it, and uh, everything would function correctly. I was able to use a small Allen wrench, remove the flip stop, reassemble the flip stop assembly with the flip stop itself rotated around now everything could function as it's as intended. And then this led me to another issue, and this is where I really started to realize that the sacrificial fence was just getting in the way. Uh, unfortunately, it still took me a while before I just fully removed it. But the way that, that you normally use the flip stop uh, in conjunction with the scale is you use the edge of the flip stop that's closest to the blade to align to the scale to you know, set your distance of your cut. Uh, for calibration of the scale, you use the opposite side of the flip stop because the flip stop itself is exactly a half inch wide. Calibration procedure is to set the opposite side of the flip stop at the half inch mark and then have the flip stop kiss a blade tooth that is on that side of the blade and then that is how you set your scale. However, with the sacrificial fence installed, you have to put the flip stop in the forward of the two tracks on top of the fence, which prohibits you from lining up that side of the, the far side of the flip stop on the half inch mark. So I had to move the sacrificial fence out of the way so that I could get the flip stop at, lined up to the half inch mark. And you can see where I've done that here. And then I was able to uh, loosen the entire fence from the fence bracket and move it over until it just kissed a tooth and making sure that I'm using an appropriate tooth. After getting the scale zeroed, and then uh, since I'd you know, loosened the fence and tightened it up again, just thought I'd check the square setting of the fence. And now, of course, I'd move the sacrificial fence out of the way. So now I'm checking against the fence itself. Uh, again, should have been another indication that I just needed to get the sacrificial fence out of the way. And it was uh, a little bit out. I went through a couple iterations of this back and forth to make sure that both the zero setting of the scale and the 90 degree or, or square setting of the, of the fence to the blade were both set accurately. And then at that point, I was able, I was ready to move on. Before moving on, I did realize that I just needed to get the sacrificial fence removed. 
and out of the way and that it was just a hindrance to the the calibration and assembly procedure and so i did that before moving on to the next step the next step and and really the the final step is to install the fence extension and then calibrate it fence extension is simple to install there's one more ratchet knob it's shorter install that into the the main part of the fence slide in the the sliding scale procedure tells you to put it at about 28 and a half inches on the sliding scale, lock it in place. Then you ex install the fence extension onto the sliding scale and you align the fence extension. What is the, and from my perspective in the video, the right edge of it, or would be the left edge from where you're looking at the 24 and a half inch marking on the sliding scale. So you want to get that aligned up as precisely as you can, then collapse the fence extension, slide the flip stop over, and put it at 24 and a half inches on the fence extension. And now you pull the fence extension out, put the sliding scale at some mark, just arbitrary, it doesn't matter. I put, put it at 25 and a half, and then cut off a piece and check to make sure everything is, is accurate. And if your initial calibration of the fence scale was accurate, and you've aligned those other things, fence extension and everything else to 24 and a half, then it should come out accurate. But if not, you can go back and you know readjust as necessary. Now that I was done with all the setup procedures from woodpeckers, I decided to use the five cut method to check just how square the miter gauge had been set up. The five cut method, if you're not familiar with it, take any you know roughly square piece of stock or scrap you have and mark the four edges, one, two, three, four, mark them going around in counterclockwise direction and then you make cuts along each of those edges rotating the piece 90 degrees in the clockwise direction as you go and when you get back to the the original side the side that you'd mark as one and made your first cut you cut off about an inch or so wide strip and what happens as you do this is any error you have off of square it accumulates as you go around so that when you get back to your final make your final cut in that wider strip that cut will contain from one end to the other uh, four times how far out of square you are so you can see here just visually as i had it set up it was square i mean i i could not see um, i held it up to light you could not see any daylight between these squares and the piece that i cut However, if you check that last offcut, it's a 1.565 on one end, and then I think it's 1.5880 on the other end. So there was a little difference between the two ends. Also, to, to show this difference, I cut the piece in half and then fold it so that the two ends are next to each other, laid it on a flat surface, and you could feel the difference. And I'll hold it up here in a second and you can see it. There's methods for calculating just how far out you are. I'll have a link in in the description below that goes into more detail about the calculations, but I'm gonna talk about it here in a second myself. And I proceeded to do some calculations. I went through the test again, and then these are the measurements I got. So A, the A measurement is the the how the width across the offcut piece that's furthest away from me. B is the width across it closest to me um, as I'm standing at the table saw. And so the difference between those two measurements, like I said, is four times the error how far out of square you are because you've made four cuts as you've gone around. So you take the difference in those two measurements, divide it by four, and then you divide by the length of that offcut piece. And what you get is how far out of square you are per inch. So my result was eight ten thousandths of an inch per inch out of square. Now, if you can measure the distance from a known pivot point to a point along your fence, multiply that error per inch that you're out by that distance to the pivot, then you have a known amount to adjust by. I said, well, let me see if I can improve this. Eight ten thousandths I thought was pretty good, but I'll see if I can improve it. So I locked the miter bar to the table saw, made a wooden piece with a point on it. I lined it up with the the point that I'd measured from the pivot point, used a feeler gauge to set the distance, and then adjusted to take out that slack. Unfortunately, I did it in the wrong direction. So you got to keep track of whether you have a positive or a negative error. 
and then which way to rotate the fence. And I did it in the wrong direction. Consequently, I actually increased my error with this go round. Here you can see another time where I'm doing the five cut test method and I'm using the flop stop, which is a nice feature of the exact 90 miter gauge. And it prevents the miter, the miter fence from wanting to flop down off the table when you have a wider piece to cut. And it's a really nice feature. Very uh, simple idea, but works really well. So again, here with a, a larger piece, a little bit more cumbersome to make all the cuts, but you're cutting along a, a longer edge there at the end. So you have a, maybe a better chance of, of capturing what the, the errors are. In the end, I, I went through the five cut test a, a number of times. You can see all my calculations here on the right. The method of trying to clamp the miter gauge in place and adjust it that way just wasn't really working very well. I wasn't able to get it closer than I could visually. So in the end, my last couple of iterations, I, I just would very carefully adjust visually with the engineer square and then check it. And by that fifth iteration, I got it down to where as, as close as I can measure, I was six ten thousandths of an inch per inch out of square. And I figured that that was good enough and was probably based on all the, the times I had worked on it, that was probably about as good as I was going to get it. And so I left it at that. Lastly, I'll briefly go over how I made a simple hanger that I could use to store the miter gauge on the wall in my shop. I started with a leftover pieces of three quarter inch plywood that I had after my five cut tests, and I rounded over all the edges and sanded the board. And then I drilled two half inch holes in the board. Each one of those would have a half inch dowel in it. These dowels would be the main supports for the miter gauge. There's also two other smaller holes and shallow holes that each one of these will have a a magnet glued into it and these will be used to store the two hex keys that come with the miter gauge. Before gluing in the dowels I rounded over the ends of the dowels that would protrude from the board just to get rid of the sharp edges, glued the dowels in place, and glued the magnets in place. These dowels are pretty cheap, they weren't particularly round and their uh, diameter is not very true to half an inch so they didn't fit very tight in the holes. So I also drove in some 18 gauge finish nails from the sides of the board that would go all the way through those dowels just to make sure they stayed in place. Next, I attached a piece of French cleat to the back of the board. I also attached a piece of three quarter inch scrap below the cleat. It's a good idea when, when you have something that's gonna hang on French cleat that isn't large enough to span across multiple cleats, adding a, a piece of scrap that's the same thickness as your cleat will help to make sure that what you're hanging stays secure. Once that was done, I applied a single coat of super blonde shellac. Once the shellac was dry, I put the hanger on the wall and stored the miter gauge. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified of new videos. Be sure to check out the description below where I'll have links to my website and social media. There will also be other information and links relevant to this video. Thanks again and see you next time.